this is a quick demonstration to show um, a bit of uh, a mix of technologies here. So we're going to have a look at a process and data that spans across Office 365 and an on-premise uh, on environment uh, that includes SharePoint, Dynamics RM, as well as a, a custom SQL database and how we surface that information into Office 365 and be able to put process across it. So if you look at the scenario that we're going to have a look at today, so we've got an in the cloud and on-premise environment. For our on-premise environment we've got some internal staff and they are provisioned with inside of their Active Directory. They use a number of systems including SharePoint, Dynamics CRM and, and, and SQL Server. With inside of Dynamics CRM we've got a, a customer repository with a list of our customers. We can go in there and modify and update customers. With inside of SharePoint is an environment where they collaborate around projects and they're also able to set up projects for specific customers and allocate budget and costs against those. And then what we have inside of CRM is that when uh, when contractors um, allocate costs to a project, they have we have got an, a list of accepted currencies, and those are stored inside of a SQL Server database. Now in the cloud, what we want to do is have our contractors, but our contractors should be able to allocate costs to projects. So they need to understand who the customer is and what projects are available. And for that, we want to keep them separate as well. So we're going to have them provisioned inside of Azure AD to keep our contractors separated from our on-premise Active Directory users. To collaborate, they're going to be able to take advantage of Office 365. With inside of that Office 365 environment, we're then going to surface information from our on-premise environment to help our contractors uh, use the data appropriately, select the correct customers, see the projects and the information, be able to choose uh, the internal staff that need to do approvals as well as you know select the, the, the accepted currencies. When they select those currencies as well, we want to use some cloud information as well, for example currency conversion uh, uh, service to be able to convert the currency back to Australian dollars in this example. Once our contractors have now used that information to fill in forms, they're going to then go and allocate a cost to a project, and then we, what we want to have is those projects, uh, sorry, those costs go through a process where they get approved. So that'll then start a process that kicks off inside of Office 365, spans across our on-premise environment, updating information inside of uh, our SharePoint environment, as well as potential to update data inside of our CRM environment as well. And that is then a process with a mix of different users, so users from Azure AD collaborating with our uh, users from our on-premise Active Directory seamlessly ac across the same workflow process. Right, so let's go and have a look at the uh, different environments. So the first one we're going to have a look at, this is my on-premise uh, uh, my on-premise environment over here. And with inside there, I have got a CRM system. So I'm just logging into Dynamics CRM over here. And what you'll see is I've logged in as Igor Jurisovich, which is an on-premise user. If I go to my accounts, uh, there are my CRM accounts. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and make a modification to one of these accounts. So I've got just a demo account here. Let's call it North Mine. So this is a new account that we're going to uh, uh, use in this demonstration. And you'll notice there that uh, it's sitting in Brisbane, New South Wales. So uh, we'll go and make a, a correction to that later and I'll show you how we can even enable uh, um, um, updates to this as well. So just remember North Park Mine in Brisbane at the moment. Right, so let's save that off. Now what we're going to do is go into our on-premise SharePoint environment. So with inside of this environment over here, I've got some customer projects. And with inside here, we allow the on-premise staff, you know, the, to be able to register projects against particular customers. So let's go and do that. Here we're going to create a new project. This is going to be a, a mine. We're going to do a new mine for the customer. Now I can actually go and search my customers here. Type in Brisbane, and you can see North Mine coming inside here. So this is indeed already a K2 form that's been uh, embedded with inside of this. Uh, on-premise SharePoint environment and integrated with that dynamic CRM system. So that's already been done. I'm going to mark that as an in-process project and give it a budget of three million, three million dollars uh, to do this project. You'll notice it's got no total costs, no costs associated with it yet, and that'll come into play uh, from what the contractors do. So if we save that in, we've got now that new that uh, for North Pi North Mine a new project for a mine. All right. 
Now we want our contractors to be able to allocate costs to this project and have our on-premise users be able to go and uh, and actually um, approve those costs. So let's go and have a look at another environment. So this is now an Office 365 environment and in this particular environment I've actually logged in here using my Azure credentials. So this is not using my uh, AD credentials and this is in the scenario it's as if the contractors have got their own accounts that they log in with and we're keeping our on-premise users separate from our uh, Office 365 and Azure users. Now the contractor can come inside here, they can go to the project expenditure site. Inside here they can go and register costs against specific projects. So if you remember, we're sitting in Office 365 now. We're going to go into a new item. So again, we are now have a, a form that we can now fill in. And indeed, this is already a K2 smart form. So from within inside of Office 365, just like we were earlier in, on our on-premise SharePoint environment, with inside of those systems we're looking at a K2 form. So to the users there, they're none the wiser that they're looking at a K2 form. So in this particular case, uh, we need to, uh, this project expenditure we need to have proved, proved is a mine shaft. So we need a new shaft to put in. Now I can go to my customers, and what you can see here is I've got a list of my Serum customers, including that North Mine one that we created a few minutes ago. So I'll choose North Mine, and then what you'll notice is now it's bringing me a list of projects, and there's that mine. So that is now a cascading drop-down, pulling a list of customers from one system, and based upon what I select here, it's filtering a list of projects from another system, which is pretty cool. If I were to go and choose Alpine Ski House, you'll see there a list of uh, uh, items uh, around Ski House. And if I go and choose our North, Part North Mine again, you can see there's that mine sitting inside there. The next thing we're going to do is put an, uh, allocate a, uh, an amount to that. So in this particular case, I'll say that new mine is going to cost um, um, 75000 And what we're going to do here is choose a list of authorized uh, currencies we can purchase in. So in this particular case, I'm going to buy some uh, um, a mine shop from South Africa. So I choose in South African rands, and what you can see there it has taken place is a currency conversion. So that's now gone and called out to another cloud service that's done some currency conversion for me. I come to my approver. Now I don't want uh, um, to allow them to select other uh, contractors. So this list of approvers that they can search is connected to my on-premise active directory. And over there I can do a search and I found Igor Jurisovic as the uh, approver that I want uh, to allocate the specific um, uh, approval to. So we can put in the details about uh, the description. What's also happened is it's pulled through my mobile number, which has come th uh, directly from uh, Active Directory based upon what I've selected over there. So hitting Save, saves that data into Office 365, and then starts that K2 workflow process that's now going to span across this Office 365 environment through to our on-premise environment. Now I've added into the demo here a little tracking of the process. So if I go and track my process, we can inside here see that uh, that mine shaft uh, that has taken place and it's currently running. If we have a look at the K2 view flow, we can see a little um, representation of the workflow process that it's currently going through. So this is the workflow that it's going through. It started off, the green is what's happened, the blue is where we are, and I can drill down into that. It's been there for 22 seconds, and the participant is Igor Jurisovic, and I perform no action on that at the moment. Right, so. That's our contractor kicking off a process from Office 365. Now if I go into our on-premise environment, I go back to my portal, now I go and have a look at my task list. Now notice I've logged in as Igor Jurisovic again, um, on-premise Active Directory, and there's that mine uh, shaft uh, project expenditure approval that's now come in. And from within inside of here, I can go and have a look at the details of that. So for example, if I click on that specific item, it loads up a form, that's got the details on it that uh, that I use to make a decision. So here's a project expenditure. I can see it's the mine shaft, North Mine. I can see the value, South African rands, the total cost in Australian dollars here. So if you remember, that is the Office 365 data that I'm now having a look at. I can also go and look at my project details, and I can see what the budget was, and I can also go and have a look at the customer details. And while I'm looking at the customer details, I can also notice that the city is in Brisbane, but the state is New South Wales. So I might want to be able to uh, update that, and we'll do that uh, um, from another location in a few minutes. 
Right, so that's one way, and I can go and approve that from, from, this, uh, from this list directly. Another way that we might want to interact with this is perhaps uh, via email. So if I go and look at my email, what we can see is that I've just received an email message about the mineshaft with some details about it. So in this email it's details about uh, the current budget of it, and I can click on a link that will take me directly to the task that I need to do. Or indeed I could actually reply to this email with the words approved or decline, and that will also continue the process. Another mechanism that we can do uh, is through the use of um, the K2 app or on your mobile. So let's, uh, I'm just logging into my mobile device. Here we go. So let's open up that onto the screen. Now on my mobile device, what I'm going to do here is uh, go to my K2 app. Give that a refresh. And what we can see there is in my task list, I can see a new the mine shaft uh, appearing inside of my task list. So what we're going to do here is open up that particular task. I can see details about it. From here, I could do things like redirect it to other users or uh, go and see what actions I can uh, do against this task. Or if I open up that, we can go and actually have a look at the details of the form with the data that sits inside there. So here is the information on my mobile. You'll notice also how the screen is rendered differently so that it forms a bit better on a mobile device. So I can see the details that's coming from my Office 365 environment sitting inside there. Again, I can have a look at my project details, which is coming from my on-premise SharePoint data, with my total cost being blank at the moment. And if I go and look at my customer details, there's the customer details coming out of the CRM system. And while I'm looking at this, I realize uh, the city is Brisbane, but the state is New South Wales. I can go into that and make that update. So I'll just change that and actually do an update over here. So what that has done is that's now updated that information to the back end. I can then go and make a decision on this particular item. So in this case, I'm just going to go and mark that as approved and submit that off. That then continues our workflow process, and the workflow process is then going to go onto our on-premise environment and update the, the and increase the total costs against that particular the, against that particular project. What it's also done is it sent me as the last thing is a little text message uh, back to the contractor to let them know that uh, that uh, that cost has been approved and what the total budget and, and costs against it are so far. If we go back onto our on-premise SharePoint environment. I go look at my customer projects. We can see there that amount sitting inside there uh, as part of the mine as the one uh, the mine shaft has up, uh, increased the total cost of this project so far. So hopefully that gives you that uh, scenario of uh, that we explained a little bit earlier of that information flowing from our on-premise environment to help surface that into Office 365 to help people make better decisions and. And, and have access to that data with inside of that environment, but then being able to then kick off processes from there that span back across to your uh, on-premise environment as well. And that can go back and forth as many times as required, even across different uh, SharePoint site collections, SharePoint site farms, and even different Office 365 environments uh, with a single K2 workflow process.